Hello and welcome to another edition of your favourite social media YouTube show. I'm Adam Libernati Roach and I'm joined by Ellie Hernanaman. 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 How do we say it properly? Libernati Roach. It's actually just Hernanaman and you're the director oh. of Truffle Social. I am, I am indeed. Thank you for coming along today. Thanks for having me. Um, we're just going to talk about social media trends and as always we have the chat before and as always we ask our guest host, which is Ellie this time, how they got into social media. So let's not beat around the bush. Ellie, tell us your yarn. How did you get started in social media? Where did my, you begin your degree and everything along those lines? My yarn. Uh, well, I actually studied at the London College of Fashion. So I studied promotion. Uh, but I sort of decided to spread my wings a bit further than fashion and go more into lifestyle PR. Okay. Um, lots of fun, learnt a lot, um, and I started working for a couple of agencies. Um, and actually, at one point, I was I was working for an agency where I was constantly kind of reading all of the press and finding out what was going on in the world for the benefit of all of our clients so that we could okay. kind of be quite reactive to things. Um, and everything that I kept reading about that kind of sparked my interest was in um, social media, particularly at that time it was Twitter. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I actually ended up begging my old boss if I could set up a social media arm of her PR agency. So you, you actually like, I know I can do this, give me a shot and let's see how it goes. Yeah. She didn't. Oh. Uh, she didn't think that it was um, something that had much longevity. She was wrong. She was indeed. Yeah. Uh, so I kind of then decided, slightly naively, I'm just going to go and set up my own agency and um, kind of went with it. And then before I knew it, Truffle back then became, it was Truffle PR. So kind of started off uh, doing public relations services with a side offering of social media. Because also, um, at the time, social wasn't really massive enough for brands and companies to um, justify providing an extra budget to, okay. to social. So it was more of a bonus. Um, but my, my end goal really was always to kind of do social. So after a couple of years of doing both, we shut down the PR side, well, traditional PR, and decided to solely focus on social. What was the turning point? Was there one thing that made you decide, okay, we're going to weigh up these two things, social and PR, and did you go, okay, we'll drop this? What was the reasoning? Was it because you saw how social is the new PR in a way, or...? Yeah, I mean, for me, I was always really interested in how um, consumers um, psychologically were being approached by brands and how can you actually get them to feel engaged and loyal um, to your yeah. brand and a lot of the time obviously with traditional traditional PR it's not really it's great obviously and there's a there's a space for it but it's quite I, I guess society has become quite um, savvy to the fact yeah. that journalists are always on the lookout um, to promote products. Um, whereas with social, you can literally just be a brand and go straight to the consumer and, and kind of engage with your audience in a, in a new and honest way. That moves us perfectly into like a segue as of such. Um, Ellie set some questions earlier today and was just asking about brands and just, we wanted to talk about social media, not a specific sector, but just a broad question to ask what people's opinions were and we got a few questions and the one we decided to settle on for this is the following it's in the age of social media how important is brand transparency I'm going to read out a few of the responses that we got online and then ask Ellie her thoughts on it so Susie Castle tweets going to appear to my right as per always says very no longer enough to hide behind anonymity, providing good customer service means being open. So basically, show what, just show your hand, always show your hand, never try and hide behind, uh, hide behind a wall, for example. 
And Tom Cox, who's a friend of yours, um, supposedly, says transparency is essential regardless of a brand sector. Being personal and sincere to followers goes a long way. This sort of transparency is going to be interesting now that Apple are, are, like, are now on Twitter with their customer support account. But like, what do you think? Do you think in the age of social media, it is important for a brand to be transparent? Or do you think they can kind of mix it up a bit, be slightly transparent and then slightly hide a few things behind the sofa, for example? Uh, well, what's behind the sofa? Nothing, nothing, <laughs> apart from this lovely new sign. OK, well, no, I, um, I think that actually sincerity and transparency are so key to making sure that the brand ethos and messages, like key messages, are getting put across in the right way. Um, and I actually think that, you know, everyday public members of the public are, they want to know, like, who's behind the brand, who's behind the company, what are they actually going for, what, what are their objectives. And I think, you know, we've come from an age where, you know, people have, or brands have put so much money into advertising and of course they need to be really um, aware of all of the key messages that they're putting across. But I think red tape um, takes away from the soul of brands quite a lot. Um, and now, like, people are just kind of, they're, they're quite cynical, they second guess, um, and they also are kind of quite aware of what the end goals of the brands are. Therefore, do they want to sell to me? If it's pretty obvious in advertising and PR, then maybe social is because of the fact that you can be quite um, time sensitive and you can be reactive to things. They're expecting great customer service. They're yeah. expecting people to come back to them in you know, maintaining the tone of voice and um, all of the, the key messages that brands want to put across. So yeah, I'd say it's, it's so important these days. Um, and just, you know, people want to know that there's a human side to yeah. companies. I completely agree. Transparency is key. Like if something's automated and it goes out at the same time as say a company trying to actually address a situation. Like the Talk Talk thing from eight months ago, that was extreme. A company got hacked, there were details everywhere and they thrusted in like automated responses and it looked awful and a lot of people actually called it out to be bullshit, which is a term I love and it's a term I've used throughout my childhood. But it's also a term that a lot of people said in tonight's chat, as you saw and you liked the majority of the tweets that said it, because we're both immature. <laughs> so the question I ask to you is, as an individual and as an agency, can you see through brand bullshit online? And how do you think is the best way to address that if you're a brand? What's the best way to stop that happening? I think uh, probably the most important thing is to make sure that you've got your crisis management responses in place beforehand mm -hmm. um, so you know if you're a, if you're talk talk yeah yeah be prepared for um, a huge audience of people slagging you um, and make sure that you've got your responses in place so and, and I'd say really if they care enough and for me I'm so much about making sure that brands listen as much as they um, broadcast, they need to make sure that they've got a, a system in place so that they've got human beings yeah. responding to people in a personal way. If it's on Twitter, which a lot of the complaints, um, you know, that's, that's mainly the platform where complaints do come through. Um, if it's on Twitter, have people there in place to respond to um, all of these complaints and treat these individuals as per their unique complaints or comments or yeah. feedback come. Um, otherwise, it just shows that, you know, if you're a brand that isn't really doing that and you're sending automated responses out, you just don't care. Would you say that brands should look at the Tesco example, which is they don't just reply straight away, they obviously research the individual prior and respond in the same tone of voice that not Tesco have, but how the individual speaks. We've all seen the famous ones. So would your tip be respond as the customer is responding to you? 
Yeah, I think sometimes, or most of the time. However, obviously, if someone came and said, and I'm reluctant to swear too much. It's okay, but, just beep it out in your head. But I fucking hate you fucking C yeah, words. Yeah. Uh, I'd, I'd probably advise Tesco or Talk Talk or pretty much any other brand not to respond accordingly. Yeah. But uh, that said, I think, you know, being human, being down to earth and responding in a way that they are going to kind of appreciate and not think that you're actually taking the piss out of them. Yeah. Um, I think it's really important. Yeah. I think you hit the nail on the head just saying be down to earth. Be down to earth and actually acknowledge the situation that's going on. Yeah. That's a perfect answer. Thank you. Thanks. And that's all of it. So. Yeah. This is Ellie. Say down the camera your, your Twitter details so people can follow you. My Twitter details, my personal details are at Ellie Truffle and um, the company that I'm proud to be CEO of is Truffle Social. As you can see, she's very obviously doing product placement there. So we're going to blank what? it out in the post edit so what? you can't even see what it is. But yeah, thank you very much for coming thank on, Ellie. Thank you. It's lovely to have you here. Um, I was going to ask her to do the macarena, but she wasn't. She I wasn't can do prepared the for that. No, you can't. No, you can't. Let's let's just well, shake on it. Just okay, shake on right, it. Just cool. shake on it. Well done. Thanks. Um, I was on Friendster. If you remember that. No, what was Friendster? I think I'm considerably older than you. <laughs> um, I was on MySpace, of course, back yeah, in the one. day. Yeah, uh, made loads of friends through MySpace um, and used to spend quite a lot of time at work on it, which got me in trouble quite often. Um, back in the days when I had a real job. Um, <laughs> and then when I, I used to work in marketing um, as a just marketing copywriter.